<laughs> Come on, man. Look out, coach. <laughs> Peace to hearts. What's up? It's your boy, E. Rule, host of the Dynasty Podcast. Late night podcast, 9.30. This is the Die Hard Hour. It's going to be a solo podcast. We're going to be talking about Tom Thibodeau. You know, we need to talk about Tom Thibodeau. Uh, you know, like always, Twitter is the voice of the Knicks right now. You know, this how everyone connects. You know, not everyone connects this way. You know, I, I realize that a lot of people don't like to um to talk on Twitter. They don't they don't like to get involved in, in arguments because it's goofy, to tell you the truth. You know, I, I got myself caught out there. A little bit. My pops just um I had a conversation with my dad. Shout out to um Papa Iru. I had a conversation with him, you know, but that, that's not that's not what, what um what's leading me to say this. But you know, I think I need to fall back a little bit on some of these um these conversations that I'm having because my energy is a certain way. You know, guys like to say what they want to say on the internet, but but listen, it's a whole different story when when you um, um get together. Barbershop conversations, um, you know, are is one thing, you know, but in the, in the barbershop, guys are actually there. They're, they're not there virtually, you know. You know what I'm saying. So if if um guys want to get spirited and start saying um stuff like clown and stuff like that, then then you might be into into like um some extracurricular activities, um inside or outside said barbershop. You know what I'm saying. So anyway, this is the internet. We should keep it that way. Keep it peaceful. I'm not here for any of that. I'm here to 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 meet diehards. You know, I have um I I contacted a um a podcast group uh what's the name of these guys uh lord have mercy my phone is uh new york knicks work i believe that's the name of their, their podcast right so I'm, I'm gonna try to to link up with them shout out to them hopefully they're listening you know uh they don't like this twitter stuff they get on twitter just just because you have to you know for the whole um you know being in the know and shit but you know my man uh, hit me with his math and said, I hit him up that way. A lot of guys do that. They said, listen, here's my math. Hit me up this way because I don't be on Twitter like that. It, it is what it is, man. So anyway, we live on Dianix Podcast. I have something to say. So we, we just want to talk about um, Tom Thibodeau and his coaching. Uh, Tom Thibodeau and his coaching should the, should be the only thing that we talk about. Like us arguing about points about basketball, that's a little bit too intelligent for what's happening with the Knicks right now. So I, I'm just going to break down a couple plays that, um, that Tom Thibodeau constantly runs. You know, and then just talk about, um, you know, the um, I want I want to say the um, the inconsistency is the way Tom Thibodeau runs this offense and coaches the team because he doesn't coach every player the same. You know, he yells at one player, but he doesn't yell at the next one. You know what I'm saying? He allows one player to do all this. He, he doesn't allow other players to do other stuff. So you know, you cannot have that when you run a basketball team. You know, that's the point I'm trying to make in with with, with the this whole um barbershop stuff. There's certain things that go on in in um in, in um conversation when men are together talking to each other. So that there's a way of speaking to each other when you, when you speak to a man, you know you know what I'm saying. And certain things are not tolerated. Same thing with Tom Thibodeau. You don't yell at Julius Randle, but you yell at Jericho Sims. Jericho Sims is a guy that's trying to stay in the NBA, and Julius Randle is already is already established. Uh, both of the guys are the same uh, same um, height and stuff, but the energy is different with both players. Sims barely gives you a reaction. Uh, Julius Randle got the energy like he'll throw hands. You know what I'm saying? So there's 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 a, a, a there's a very um close disconnect to what I'm saying with both worlds there. But anyway, let's let's get into the the first one. This is the one that I've been playing lately. I actually played it the last couple podcasts. This is um uh Julius Randle's high post to nowhere. That's what I'm calling it because it's there's there's no I've never seen this play run anywhere. So anyway, let me just say hi to everybody before I start clicking play and stuff. Hope you guys can hear the audio pretty good. The audio's been really um you know uh, weird the last couple times. You know, I think um, I'm blaming State because I think it's because because State stopped wearing headphones, so I think that's why the audio's been messed up a little bit. But um, you know, I, I gotta stop blaming State for stuff. I, I gotta uh, get files because <laughs> apparently my internet company is 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 trash, man. So anyway, let's get into the first video. This is like like I said, this is uh, Julius Randle's high post to nowhere. Check it out. Perks. See how he utilizes his body, although he's short, he uses his body very well to fit off defenders. Fournier catches back from Randall. Randall wants it. Here comes a double team. Oh. Randall fouled on the pass. He changes puck in the last minute. That shot from Barrett won't count. And instead, the Knicks will take it out of bounds after this timeout. Oh, man, I played that video so many times, it's unbelievable. But I mean, if you, if you watch that clip, 
you know, I'll, I'll play it again in, in a second. But if, if you watch the clip, you know, just the basic thing. What the, this is what the action that, that matters. It's a pick between I believe that's Fournier and Randall. Uh, he sets a pick, and um, you know, he just stands right there, like not even not even a foot, two feet away from from um from where he just set the pick. So I mean, I've never seen a pick that way. So after he does it, then he seals off his man, puts his hand up to get the ball like this. Um, obviously the weak side defender is gonna come over there, pop it out of his hands, and go for a fast break. Um, the thing about that this play is that it happens all the time. You know, this play hardly ever works. <laughs> it hardly ever works. Like he was able to get the ball over to the shooter, but it's always this um double pump where he's faking like he's gonna shoot it, but then he throws it to the side. He always does that, you know. But it's not he. Everyone keeps always focusing on Julius Randle. Tom Thibodeau is the one that's running this play consistently. You know, I don't know what to say. It's like um that Kai baby dude. I don't know what else to say. The, the Knicks run this play all the time. It's not Julius. The, I don't want to blame Julius Randle because they're only running the plays that Tom Thibodeau wants them to run. You know, they're running it the way that he said to run it. So they run this play in practice. So Tom Thibodeau wants this play to run. It doesn't make absolutely any sense. So anyway, I'm going to play it one more time, and then we'll, we'll see if we can move to the next one. Perks. See how he utilizes his body, although he's short. He uses his body very well to fit off defenders. Fournier catches back from Randall. Randall wants it. Here comes a double team. Oh. Randall fouled on the pass. He changed his mind in the last minute. That shot from Barrett won't count. Instead, the Knicks will take it out of bounds after this timeout. Now, Jesus Christ. And then at the end, he has the nerve to argue with the refs. This is not the guy, man. You know, we all know that that's the argument. Um, Julius Randle's not the guy. We all know that. So I don't understand why that is cont the continuous argument out there. Why are we still talking about that? We all know that Julius Randle's not that guy. You know, we need to get another guy in here to to um to to get that. You know, I'm not sure if RG's there. I think RG will be that one day. You know what I'm saying? But Julius Randle's not that guy, man. He's just not mentally built this way. But I mean, you know, aside from all of that, this play is trash, and it's Tom Thibodeau. You need to put the 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 anger on Tom Thibodeau and not on on somebody like me. I know basketball. You know a lot of guys on this Twitter thing. You guys know basketball too, but you want to make a point just so you can on um, fry Randall only Randall. You know, say so you don't want to fry nobody else because you want to make a point because it's some something that, that you believe in in basketball. So you don't want to you don't want to listen to nobody's point unless their unless their point is close to yours. You know, you just want to focus on trashing Randall. Listen, man, get focused on the basketball play. That basketball play is trash. So anyway. I don't want to keep um, harping on that one. Let's um let's try another one. Um, let's uh let's do let's do the Embiid cut. So this, you know I'm just gonna verbally talk about it. This is the cut where Randall quote unquote um lets uh, Embiid um sail to the basket. Now there's more to this play. You know there's more to this play. Um I want I want to say this. It comes back to Tom Thibodeau. How does it come back to Tom Thibodeau? Because there has to be a defensive philosophy. Okay. If um guys are gonna switch, you have to talk. Okay. You have to talk. You know what I'm saying? Certain players switch. You gotta yell, switch, take my man, you know, take take my take my guy. You gotta say something, especially if you're the anchor of the defense, which is the center and the power forward. You have to talk, my brother. You know, um, the, the guards, they have to talk, they're the first line of defense. You know, um, if you're switching and stuff like that, um, you gotta say something. If you know, it is it is what it is. Uh, you know, I, I'll I'll get into specifics in a second, but just let's just watch the play together. So anyway, you know, there was no sound on that play, but let's, let's just watch it again because I'm quite sure you guys have missed it. So if you watch the play there, I'm not, I, I don't I don't have it to break it down. But if you watch that play, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a pick and roll, right? Uh, it's basic pick and roll. This is uh, James Harden pick and roll with Embiid, right? So, so the thing is, Harden makes the pick and roll, but he's already being guarded by somebody. There's two guys there. But um, Mitch Robinson makes the decision to fully commit to stop um, James Harden. Now, okay, that's that's the key, right? Let's let's not even go any further than that. Just key on Mitch Robinson, what Mitch Robinson does, and what happens after Mitch Robinson does. Not don't focus on the pass. Don't focus on anything else but Mitch Robinson. I'm gonna play it one more time. So the point I'm trying to make there is that he fully commit to, to stop um, 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 James Harden. He didn't stop him. If you look at the play, Harden ends up in front of, of Mitch Robinson. So he didn't stop the play at all. 
He went up there to throw his whole body there out of control, not not fully in the moment of what's happening. It's a pick and roll. You, your job is to defend the role, you know, not, not to not to commit and stop the the um the passer. Yeah, you know, either one has to happen. But I mean, as as a good defender, you have to play both roles there. You have to play a little bit to, to help, you know, on, on um on James Harden, but you also have to be aware of your defender. You can't completely abandon your defender expecting someone else to take your uh, take your place there. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of things are happening in the, in this play. So now I want you to to um to focus on uh, Julius Randle. I'm gonna play it one more time. Yes, Julius Randle is completely asleep on this play because his thing is that it was a switch. You know, if you watch the switch, the players switched e each other. Now there's a three point shooter open. So Randle in his in his mind, he's he's worried about the three point shooter. He's not worried about Embiid. You know, he's not, not focused on Embiid because he's worrying about that his man got picked, his man is out the picture, so he had to recover for the guy that um that switched over to his man. That's what he's thinking. You know, he's not smart enough with the defensive awareness and speaking. You know, he's not he's not aware of, of what's going on on the court. This is this is who he is. You know, so we're not going to expect him to be that. You know, it, it, of course, he's absolutely wrong. He, he should have um, been more court aware to at least know where Embiid is, put a, put a body on him. He just let him pass. He actually touched him and let Embiid go, go by him. And then Embiid went and went for the duck. So that, that's two things. That's that's um, Mitchell Robinson committing too far, you know, uh, to James Harden, but still lets James Harden get past him because James Harden and Embiid were standing next to each other when Embiid made the dunk. You know what I'm saying? So what, what is Mitchell Robinson doing? Again, on this play, Julius Randle's in and st standing there, and he just like don't know where he is. He's like, oblivious. I, I don't think he he'll, he'll be he was ready to get back on the shooter if they pass it to the shooter. And um, obviously he he was not paying attention to Embiid there. So I mean, it's two different guys there, two different two different guys there. So listen, after that play, I would have called a timeout, you know. And if I'm not mistaken, we did not call a timeout after that play. If he, if that happened and I was coaching, I would have called a timeout and I would have been cursing out number one, Mitch Robinson, for for um for what he did, and Julius Randle, both of those guys. You know why? Both because they are the anchors of the defense. The perimeter players are the first line of defense, like I said. But who's watching the defense? The power four and the center is supposed to be watching everything. You know, they're supposed to keep their mind on what's happening. If the center, which is Mitchell Robinson, is going to make a decision to leave his man to, to play the um the, the um the, the pick, the pick man, the, the, I mean to play the on um, the ball handler on the pick um person, if he's gonna leave the center, then he needs to say, um, take mine, Randall, get mine. You know what I'm saying? As soon as he says it, that'll wake Julius Randall up, and Julius Randall will be like, uh, you know, I got it. You know what I'm saying? And as he's doing that, he's got to say, watch the shooter. So anyway, take a look at who's Julius Randle is guarding. Okay, that's number one. And um, we'll, we'll after the, after this um this last replay, we'll go on to the next one. Take take a look at it's, it's number twelve, I believe, that um that Julius Randle is supposed to be guarding. It's disgusting because uh, Julius Randle, I can't. I, I'm trying to defend him, you know, for for his for his stupidity and not being um court aware. You know, but you know that's that's the reason why he wasn't worried about NB because he's more worried about the shooters. So so now here, the, the, the same guy that I made a whole video about on Twitter, he's going back and forth for me about uh defensive principles and oh you're fighting the coach, you gotta stop the this, you gotta do this, that the other, all this big mumble jumbles, uh scientifical bullshit. You know what I'm saying? But when it, when it comes down to it, if you're coaching a team, if you're teaching a team, it has to do with defensive philosophies and speaking. That, that it is what it is. Julius Randle is completely out of it because he, he, you know, Tom Thibodeau does not enforce, um, you know, the big men, you know, to be that anchor and communicate on defense. He does not enforce it, you know. He doesn't enforce it, and you know, and, and that is the problem with, with with everything going on here. Embiid, Embiid, and Harden, come on, scouting reports. You want to talk about scouting reports? Tom Thibodeau is supposed to be the one that prepares everybody for everything, right? So, um, you know, spoiler alert: uh, Harden and Embiid is going to run pick and roll all day. You know, we got one of the greatest um, shooters, shooting um, guards, shooting guards, point guards, guards, whatever you want to say of all time in James Harden. Cheat code is there. Then you got one of the best centers of this era um, in, in the NBA on the same team. You know they're going to run pick and roll together. How are you going to defend it? The Knicks have no fucking idea. How? Why don't they know? Uh, have no fucking idea? Because of Tom Thibodeau. Because of Tom Thibodeau. I'm going to take a pause here for a second just to say what's up to the to the chat and I'll catch up with what you guys are, are saying. Hopefully, guys, you guys, the audio is good. Shout out to, to Geraldine. What's good, Miss, Miss Geraldine? Uh, tough love. Peace to tough love. These are all my regulars, man. Shout out to you guys. Uh, I am Jarell is always here. Big Taz, what's up? 
We got infamous new king. Uh, salute to everybody in the chat. Yeah, enough respect to everybody. Oh, the tips office is trash. It, it is what it is. Um, confusing. Uh, let me see. A confusing uh, play that it, that first play you're talking about. It, it's it's a play. It doesn't make any sense. I've never seen that play ever in my life. Ever in my life. I've never seen it play. And if and if the coach wanted to run it, I would be like, yo, fam, this play does not work. If I'm on the coach's staff, I'm going to be like, yo, we need to get rid of this play. We need to get rid of this play. Just like that. That would be the key argument. You want to talk about arguments and in and, uh, and real life, whatever, that that coaching session, every time we run that play or every time that, that play comes on, on um, in the film session, I will be cursing out Tom Thibodeau. He will have to fire me because I, as I'm not going to allow that play to constantly be run. It's the stupidest play I've ever seen. That first play, like I said, with with, with um, it was the Randall uh, play to nowhere. He's getting triple teamed. It is a triple team, and you got a power forward in a position to make to make those these passes. So it doesn't make any sense. It's not a guard. He's not a guard. So why do we keep using it in, in, in like the the um the the what do what do you call the the LeBron James set? You know, the, the, even even if LeBron James was here, it wouldn't work. You know, it, it's just a stupid play. It doesn't make any sense. That was the first play that I showed. All right, let's just keep it moving. I just want to say what's up to everybody. This is on um, Forever Profits. What's good? Offense is, it's, it, yo, it, I mean, I can't even say, yo, Forever, uh, forever Profits. I, I can't even say it's predictable. You know, it, it's just, it's just like ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculous. The offense is ridiculous. You know, I, I, if, I, if I could um, edit this, edit your post, offense is too predictable. Um, I would put offense is too ridiculous, man. I know you agree with me. Right, that play is I, I just it drives me crazy. That's why I keep playing it. I mean, this is like the third straight podcast that I played it, you know, just just to um to show show you guys. So I'm, I'm gonna do this more often. I'm gonna uh, find plays that that Tom Thibodeau does, and then we're just gonna play it, and I'll, I'll just talk my shit over it. Um, you know, yeah. I mean, he's been playing this play all season. Last year he didn't do it as much. Last year I felt like that play was a little bit more deeper in inside the um. You know, I think it was like a little bit closer to the foul line when when they ran that play. It was a little different. Like I don't understand why they're so close to each other. Like I, I just don't understand that he's so close to each other. And then if you look at everybody else in the play, they're out the play. You know they're not even positioned to catch the ball. The only person that's open is the, is the person in the corner looking to get the three point shot. You know, even Mike Breen is confused. I, I I don't know what Mike Breen is looking at because Mike Breen's oh, he, he um he, he faked the shot and he passed it the last second. No man, that is the play. That is the play. They watch that shit all day long. That is the play. It drives it drives me crazy, man. So um, I just go on to keep talking to everybody here. Mr. Don Hines, what's good here? Tibbs, I said, yo man. Oh my God, you know what? What can you say? Oh man, it, it, you know this high key. It, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. I I just want to get out here to um to keep on going. Uh, I feel sorry for Clyde who has to watch this bullshit for the last twenty years. You know, here's the thing too. Clyde always says says a lot of stuff. He says a lot of things that we're thinking about. But my thing is like, do they ever ask Clyde to come to practice to see so he could talk to the players, to talk to the guards? You got one of the greatest defensive players, one of the greatest offensive and defensive players, uh, two way players of all time at the at the um. At the guard position, probably like the, um the the um like the pinnacle, you know, Clyde Frazier is probably the, the greatest two way guard of all time. You know, at point guard, I'm going to talk about you know at point guard, greatest two way point guard of all time. You know, I, I, have they ever invited him to a film session, to a coaching session? Have they ever invited him to see what they what they say? Invited him to talk to the to the guards? You know, to just just so they. You know, so they can get on the same. I just don't get it. I just don't get it. You got the greatest, one of the greatest basketball players of all time sitting right there. He should be, he should have his own seat anywhere he needs to go. And, and if he needs to say something to the, to the players, he should be allowed to just pop up when he feels like it. You know, I, you know, it's just, it's very odd, man. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. What's going on? Drip Moore, what's good, my man? Uh, Drip Moore is here. Um, anybody else here? You got Peter Rodriguez. I saw you on, on one of the last podcasts. Uh, they need to let let loose the deuce. Yes, man. They need to let let loose the deuce and, and flush this damn offense, man, because it's absolutely nuts. Um, yeah, I, okay. I, I'll I'll keep doing it. You know, it's gonna be shotgun. You know how I do it. So um, it is what it is, man. So let, let's get into the last play. This is the last play I wanted to show. This is this is um when um Tibbs uh you know yelled at Sims. So um, let's just watch the play together, and then we can come back and break it down. 
we see Cam Reddish too a little bit later? We certainly saw him early in the in the ball game Friday night. Barrett out top. Harden switches on to him. Looks like he hunted hard. I'm sorry. I, I, I got to stop the play because I don't know if you heard um, Tom Thibodeau in the beginning there. I'm, I'm going to play it one more time just so you can hear. Listen listen closely in the beginning and listen to Tom Thibodeau. You think we see Cam Reddish too a little bit later? We certainly saw him early in the, in the ball game Friday night. Did you hear it? Did you hear him? Complete trash coach, man. Why are you emasculating um, Sims there? It makes no sense because this is basketball. Uh, before we even watch the rest of the play, this is basketball. Basketball is fluid. We're not playing football, okay? We're not playing football when we run a play and there's, like, really nothing that you can do. Once the play, once the, the ball is snapped, whatever, and you have options, there's nothing really you can do at that point. Um, before the ball is snapped, you can call audibles and shit like that. But in basketball, basketball is free-flowing. If you're running a play, okay, cool. But it, but if the play doesn't run according to to the um, to way that you initially wanted it, then you gotta have contingency plans, man. This is this is professional sports. So if if um Sims was supposed to do something, so we'll, we'll talk about what he was supposed to do in a second. But if if Sims was supposed to do something, um, if he if he doesn't do it, if he wasn't paying attention, whatever, there is a second option to every play because basketball is fluid. So so okay so Sims didn't do what he was supposed to do on the play initially so what um should should the um should the Knicks just throw the ball out of bounds oh fucking that play's messed up you know oh we have no other option yeah and then Tom Thibodeau he he pulls the whole team out, out of the play with that with with that outburst against um um Jericho Sims in real time he puts the whole team in in, uh, in disarray when he does that. You know, if I was the coach, instead of saying, you know, damn it, whatever, cursing out um, Jericho Sims because he messed up um, the, the the beginning of the play, you know, so I mean, that means the play is gone. If I was the coach, I, I, I would have been yelling Sims, uh, I would be yelling the Sims, like, like, stay in the game, Sims, or whatever, you know, keep it moving, rotate, or I would be saying something else, you know, just, just to remind the players to get back on the ball. Second option, you know? It is what it is, but no. Tom Thibodeau pulls himself completely out the play, curses um Jericho Sims in front of the crowd, in front of the other players, in front of the, the opposing team. You know, is 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 Tom Thibodeau coaching us or what? Is he coaching the Knicks or what? You know, so you so you fry your your, your rookie. Now now he, he wants to play, he wants to do he, you know, uh, Sims is an impressionable uh, young man, he doesn't talk or nothing, he's trying to do right, he wants to play. You know, he, he wants to do right, he's playing extremely hard. The kid was playing hard. You know, he makes one mistake and you curse him out so loudly in front of the crowd, like I said, in front of the opposing um, team, right on the camera where you can hear it live at MSG. You can hear it right on ESPN. I'm watching on ESPN3. You can you can hear it loud as as as, as anything. That that is a that is a bad coach, man. That's a bad coach. You know, it, like if he messed up, don't worry about it, Sim. Stay in the game. You know, stay in the game. You know, that's what you say. You don't curse out your out your um your, your player and and then put the pressure on everybody else to do something, you know? Because then now now um Julius Randle's gonna have that same energy that Tom Thibodeau has, you know. Everybody else is gonna have that same energy against um Sims that, that Tom Thibodeau just had. It, it it is what it is. But the energy if if um Sims messed up like I said, stay. I said it's all good. Sims stay in the game, you know. That gives that gives Julius Randle energy. That make that gives the rest of the offense energy. Okay, so let's um let me let me just continue to play. So just continue just to watch um this initial play, and then I'll play it again to see to let, make you guys keen on certain um aspects of this play. You think we see Cam Reddish too a little bit later? We certainly saw him early in the in the ball game Friday night. Barrett out top, Harden switches on to him. Looks like he hunted Harden for the switch, and Fibel shows you why he is an elite defender in this league with the steal. Maxi drains the three. You said it, Doris. The game coming a little bit easier for Tyrese Maxi. Yo, man, I'm so aggravated at, at, at uh, Tom Tom Thibodeau. At the end of the play, he's still focusing only on Jericho Sims. I mean, uh, RJ just got stripped, right? He just got stripped. Okay, so we're not gonna say nothing about that. We're not gonna say about anything about the, the the picks that were made after, like the Julius Randle pick, the the Fournier pick, everything that was happening in the, in the offense. We're not gonna um yell it at RJ or whatever. In my opinion, no yelling needs to happen during this time. You know, you're not yelling at me. This we're grown people. Okay, we we grown people. You're not yelling at me, fam. You, you you know what I'm saying? Just you're just not yelling at me because because that's the end of it. You know, yeah, as soon as you start yelling and talking, whatever. Now we're not talking about basketball. Now we're gonna talk about something else. 
you know, we're going to talk about what I want to talk about if you're going to be yelling at me that way. That, that that's that's first and foremost. But but sec secondly, listen, the play was over. Then it ended up in, in a three point shot. So I mean, like I'm saying, everything that happened just there. The only thing that you want to focus on is the fact that that um Jericho Sims didn't come up to set a pick. It is it's mind boggling to me. You know, that's the only thing that you want to focus on is Julius is um excuse me Jericho Sims not coming up to set the pick at that at that point. So that ruined the whole offense. So you're not gonna talk about um anything else that happened transpired in that play, the the, the second option in that in, in that play. You're not you're not gonna talk about the second option, you know, and what happened after that. You're not gonna talk about the, the fact that RJ is left-handed, but he went right right into the double team and then going towards the triple team. You know what I'm saying? You're not gonna say that when 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 RJ is left-handed, when he should have went baseline to the left. Which uh, Jericho Sims, if you would have told him, "Don't worry about the Sims, stay in the game," RJ could have went left. Um, Sims might have ended that play with a fucking alley oop. You know what I'm saying? Um, turnover. All right, everybody shoots up the court. Um, everybody forgets about Maxi in the corner. How many Knicks players do you see running to the middle to the basket? How many people do we need to defend the, the um the rim? Jericho Sims, even though he messed up, he ran the full length of the court to recover on defense there. But yet and still, we want to yell at him about setting the pick there. Let's let's watch this again. For uh, for um, let's let's um at, at this point now, okay, Sims. If, if you if spoil if spoiler alert for those that are not paying attention, if Jericho Sims was supposed to set that pick, so if Jericho Sims was supposed to set the pick, it didn't work. Julius Randle took the initiative to to begin the second option. Okay, now I want you to watch everything that happened there, and then I want you to to, to key on um. I want you to key on all the picks, and then I want you to key on what what uh, Randall, the, uh, not Randall, what RJ does before the turnover happens. So let, let's push play on this again. Watch it as an entirety. You think we see Cam Reddish too a little bit later? We certainly saw him early in the in the ball game Friday night. Barrett out top. Harden switches on to him. Looks like he hunted Harden for the switch, and Fibel shows you why he is an elite defender in this league. With the so anyway, you see what I'm saying there? Julius Randle sets a pick. It wasn't. It was. It was decent. Then Fournier was supposed to set a pick, but he stands there and then he goes around the pick, which keeps the defender still in the same spot. If you're gonna set the pick, set the pick enough to push the player away to give RJ the, the ability to run um to to his right if he wanted to. So RJ decided to run right, but he runs right into the same guy that Fournier was supposed to pick off him, and that person steals the ball from RJ Barrett. You know, so um to me that is the is is the point is the is the point um where, where you should be yelling at, at somebody. You know, Fournier should have pushed his that that guy that he picked. He should have pushed him out to play. You push him out to play a little further, and then you walk him out. You walk him out to get him away from RJ, so RJ can be alone there in that spot to make that one that one on one offensive play. So RJ made the decision to go right. Okay, so he went right into the into the triple team because Fournier did not seal that man off far enough. You, you know what I'm saying? He should have set the pick and sealed this man off a little a little further to give. Um, RJ Barrett time to um uh, uh, enough space to make his move. So anyway, RJ he's left-handed, but he goes right. He just drops his head and goes right. Um, the person like I said, the Fournier is supposed to be um that should have set the pick for. He comes in and just snatches the ball from RJ. Give me those cookies, and then they go off on their fast break. RJ should have should have um he, he RJ did initially go right, but but you know. You're a basketball player. Let's see some moves, man. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to be, you know, in between the legs like Tim Hardaway and all this other stuff. Okay, listen. Um, drop the ball. Um, you know, fake like you're gonna go hard because the um, uh, what's it like Lee Halen, whatever the guy's name is. Um, the the, the trainer has been training him all summer. He likes to he likes to do these moves where where like drive hard, stop and drop the ball. You know, like if you watch his his um his training videos, which which I think I think are just like, you know, it's mediocre to me. You know, to tell you the truth, I, I I get the concepts he's trying to teach these players, but that concept that he that he teaches them, RJ Barrett should have did that. He should have drove hard to the right, stopped, dropped the ball, crossed it over, and went left. He's left-handed. He should have went left. Um, the the what's the name? MB would have converged on on um, RJ, and Sims would have had the alley oop. Simple, you know. But let let's let's uh, let's continue uh, at everything that happened there, and only curse out Jericho Sims, and also press him and get in his face too. I'm not playing that shit. I'm not playing it. You know, I'm telling you, I'm I'm not, I'm not playing. I'm quite sure a lot of you would feel the same way. I'm not playing that shit. You you know what I'm saying? That 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 yo Tom Thibodeau's a joke to me. He's a joke. You know, um, and also too, let, let's um, let's watch it one more time. This will be the last time. I, I want you to watch what happened after the, the turnover. Okay, we already spoke on everything that happened before the turnover. Let's watch what happened after turnover. But you gotta watch it in its entirety. You know, so don't get don't get triggered. Focus right now. I'm telling you, focus on after the the steal. Okay. You think we see Cam Reddish too a little bit later? We certainly saw him early in the in the ball game Friday night. 
Barrett out top. Harden switches on to him. Looks like he hunted Harden for the switch. And Feibel shows you why he is an elite defender in this league with the steal. Maxi trains the three. I can't I can't take um watching Tom to be able to yell at that kid again. But if you if you watch it, how many Knicks players were in the paint? I don't know if you if you were paying attention. There were five Nick players that got back. They all were in the paint. Okay. Uh Fournier was trying to stop the ball with like two Knicks with him. He should have went to the corner and, and uh and found um uh Maxi. Because um these NBA players they don't run fast breaks to the rim anymore. Let's say the same person that I made a video about a while ago from, from Twitter arguing with him about whatever he was saying about the play, and then I had to break it down again just to show that, that he was that he was wrong with what he what he was saying. And in, in that turnover there, uh all NBA players they go to the three-point line, they don't go to the basket like they used to. This is not the early 2000s, 90s, 80s, you know, this is the 2020s right now. The um the, the NBA fast breaks they do not go to the rim, they go to the corners, you know. We we had a play not too long ago where it was Tim Hardaway Jr. and um what what was the other kid? Uh you know, the, the other kid is not even in the league anymore. You know, anyway, they had an argument, almost almost looked like they were gonna have a fist fight underneath the basket because um he was one one guy was supposed to go to to the um they went on a fast break and he was supposed to um pass it out to the to the three-point line, but um but Tim Hardaway Jr. was was um expecting the guy to to go to the basket. But this is this is quote unquote Martin NBA. Everybody's going to the three-point line. You, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, what is the concept there? What is the defensive concept there? Tom Thibodeau is the coach, right? So if we go on a fast break, it, it, you know, the mentality should be like, listen, watch the corners because modern NBA basketball, 2022, guys are not converging. They're not converging on the rim like this. They convert, they're coming down and they're just going straight, you know? And if anything, they're panning out this way to go to the three-point lines. So Maxi being wide open is uh, Fournier's fault. You know, also, too, the guys that are running that are already down in, in, in the paint should be yelling for Fournier to get to the corner. You know what I'm saying? Key, key words to make guys that are, that are, that are like, uh, you know, lost it for a second. Those key words of talking basketball while you're out there, telling um, Fournier, get to the corner. That would make Fournier run. Oh, shit, let me get to the corner so, so I can guard Maxi. You know, because they already had five Knicks in the paint. Nobody else on Philly got back except, except um, you know, just Maxi and whoever the ball handler was. You know, you know what I'm saying? Five dicks in the paint. I know I ain't crazy. You know, I we watched the play a million times. You know, you know, I, I don't know what you guys are watching. You know, not necessarily you you people in in the chat, but just people that might pop onto this video and have their set opinion about Randall. They only want to curse out Randall, and that's it. You know, they want to praise this guy. Oh, he's only 21. He's only 21. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Tell Tom Thibodeau that that um that Jericho Sims is only like 22 or whatever how old he is. You know these guys are babies. They want to play. They haven't played all year. Now you're gonna yell at them when you find when you need them. They you need them to save your job, and you cursing them out like that. I, you know I just don't know what else to say. I just don't know what else to say. You know so it comes to me with all this that I'm that I'm trying to say here. Let me let me get the chat up here so I can um get busy with you guys in a second. Uh, when it, when it comes down to it, you know coaching. If you're if I'm if I'm the coach, right? Um, basic basic coaching right now. Before we even set any plays, we got to get the fundamentals down. That's 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 first and foremost. We got to get the fundamentals down. Okay, what does that mean? Fundamentals down. This is mean like, hey guys, this is how you make a layup. This is guys, this is how you shoot a jump shot. That's not what I'm talking about. Fundamentals. You know, uh, basic. Uh, 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 what what is our base as far as philosophy? Um, playing this game of, of of basketball right now. What is our our focus, you know, let's break it down to the fundamentals. Okay. This is what we need to do in this particular time on offense. What is our, our, um, our, our concept, not necessarily the, 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 the playbook, you know, I'm not going to bust out, bust out a playbook. You know, I'm not going to bust out a, a playbook and say, Hey, read the playbook. And we're just going to run the plays outside of the playbook because this is not football. Okay. What is the general concept of how we want to go about playing basketball? Okay, that's that's number one. Because when the playbook doesn't work, the concept of what we're trying to do as a team will never fail. You know, because that is what's what is is what I believe the uh, the fundamentals is. When you're talking about fundamentals, that's what I'm talking about. The fundamental, the fundamental principle of what we do when we step on that court to to play any team. This is who we are as the Knicks. This is not even the Knicks. This is who we are as Tom Thibodeau coach basketball team. 
you know what I'm saying? This is this is the the, the format of, of what I want to do here, the concept, you know. So fuck the playbook. When it comes down to it, you know, what what are we doing out there as a team? You know, that's that's first and foremost, yo. You know, you know, so I mean it, it just drives me crazy to see what's going on because we do not have that footprint. We do not have that carbon footprint. Um, let me use an example. The Miami Heat, we've been talking about them, where I've been talking about them the last couple of days. Miami Heat, they have a carbon footprint that's been in existence for 25 years as long as Pat Riley has been involved with that organization. Okay? Um, yesterday when state was late, I was talking about that that carbon footprint. The Miami Heat, you can you can draw comparisons to the teams with Alonzo Mourning. Tim Hardaway Jr., you can draw comparisons to that era. You can draw comparisons to the uh, Dwayne Wade era when he had um, all those ragtag group of um, veterans on there along with him. And then you, you can go back to LeBron James era. And now you can go back to the current era. If you look at each one of those teams, each one of those eras, there is a simple carbon footprint there that, that has been established by Pat Riley. Okay? Spolstra in himself is a great coach, but disciple of Pat Riley – Aside from being the disciple or whatever, the disciple, there is a footprint, okay? If you want to talk about disciple, right? When people say disciple, they're, they're, they're referring to Christ, Jesus Christ, right? What is what is the foundation of, of, of Christianity? You know, Jesus didn't start Christianity. Jesus was a Jew. After Jesus died, people started Christianity, okay? How did Christianity, um, what, is, what is the, the foundation of Christianity? Remember um, um, Jesus Christ, right? Remember um, his his teachings. Remember everything that he was saying. That, that anything that he was doing during that time, the the philosophy and stuff like that, the uh, Eucharist, the the um the the um the wine, what the what the the purpose of that is, the symbolism of it. You know, what I'm saying that is the carbon footprint that 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 is the basis of of, of Catholicism. All the other shit that, that that they made up along the way, you know, is not the basis of what of what it is. You you know you know what I'm saying. So. You know what I'm trying to say is that you know the the um, basis foundation of the Miami Heat basketball, you know, disciples of of Pat Riley has been going on for 25 years. You can't go against God, fam. You can't go against God, no matter how you look at it. You know, and, and that's the that's the best analogy that I can give you when it comes to this basketball shit. You know, and, and like it, it it irks me so much because I mean, listen. You know, I, I'm only on Twitter just, just so I can be involved or whatever. But I'm reading stuff, and then you make a comment, and people go crazy or whatever. You, like, I'm not going to say that you don't know basketball. You do do, you do know basketball. But the, but there's a fundamental um, carbon footprint or whatever you, whatever you want to say that's missing from, from your conversation. Okay, you do not have it. You know what I'm saying? So my, my opinion is to, to listen to people that do have it instead of running your fucking mouth. Listen to people. Listen to what people are, are trying to tell you before you start running your fucking mouth. You know what I'm saying? So that, that that's that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to focus on here. And you know, just the moral of the story here is everything is connecting back to Tom Thibodeau. That's the point I'm trying to make here. So I'm going to continue doing the, the this type of thing after every game because that is the the halftime to crunch time to me is not fun at this point. Now I'm, I'm on I'm on halftime to crunch time having fun with my peoples, having fun with all my regulars here. You know. So um you know if you tune into the show you're gonna have fun. You're gonna be laughing and joking and talking about all kind of stuff. You're on there with, with, with my guys in the chat. You know, if you want to pop in and, and, and enjoy that, the people that are popping in now, check out the halftime to crunch down and let's have a good time amongst each other. You want to talk about barbershop? In the barbershop, that's what we do. In the barbershop, that's what we do. We in it to cracking jokes. At least a black barbershop, I want to say. Spanish barbershops are a little different. You know, you know, they talk their shit too, but it's a little different. Black barbershops, you come in there, ain't hey, there's people in there who's getting their haircut. <laughs> there's hardly anybody ever getting their haircut in the black barber when I'm in there, when you when you go in there. You know, so everybody's talking, whatever they're talking, and everybody's having a good time. You know, it's not tense. People are not are not screenshotting. Oh, you said this. You know, you know, what I'm saying you said this back in 2012. Nobody's doing that. You know, we're sitting there and, and we're having fun talking about basketball. Yes, it can get heated. It can get heated, but but guys, say, yo, man, calm down, man. Listen, not in the barbershop. Let's take that shit outside if you're gonna do that. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is because this is how we talk, men and women. It's not just men. Women be in the in the barbershop too. Women come in there and get their hair cut too. You know, so you know, let me let me let me let me say this too. Like I, I do a lot of cursing on here. My my pop said, you know, you never know who's watching, that type of thing. Listen, I, I you know, I, I get it, my pops, I respect my pops, but I don't I don't give a fuck who's watching, to tell you the truth. You know what I'm saying? If uh if if you don't like the, the way that, that that I'm that I'm talking, 
then just find another another, another podcast. Because if you can't get past certain words that I'm saying, and but can't hear the real that I'm saying, then you don't need to be here. That 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 that's the that's the straight facts. What what I have to say with that. Now at at the same time, there's other people out there that have careers doing whatever doing whatever they do. They might they might be cursing. They might be doing whatever. But there is a a a, a, a fundamental thing about about the show why people sit there and watch. Or why they continuously get jobs and stuff like that? Because real recognize is real, you know. And and I'm I'm not speaking through a teleprompter. I'm speaking off the top of the head. I just made this podcast off the top of the head. I, I started it at nine thirty. I made the um the the link at nine thirty. That's when I excuse me not nine thirty nine o'clock is when I made the link. So that's when I decided to do this podcast at nine p.m. You know. So so I, I didn't. I'm not sitting here with a team. This is me. You know everything that I'm saying is off the top of the head, man. So anyway. You know, let me let me just end that so I can so I can get back to to um what, why I'm here, the the people there in the chat. So um listen man, I hear see people saying facts. Um, yeah, Tim's needs to go, man. I mean, let me just, I'm skimming through the 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 comments. I I just want to want to get your 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 opinions up out here before I get out of here. Ah oh, man, if they don't get playing time, how are they supposed to learn from their mistakes? Listen, this is what happens in practice. Um, Tom, um, shout out to shout out to Pat Riley again. Or the Miami Heat, or whatever you want to say, Eric Spolstra, he plays everybody. You know what I'm saying? And if he doesn't play somebody, if he needs them and he calls them, they're ready. You know what I'm saying? Um, these players don't don't need to get playing time in real games in order to play good. You know, they're, they're part of the Miami Heat, the Miami Heat franchise. These guys, they they have a a cardio uh, quota that they, they need to hit. You know, if they're not if they're not in that cardio thing that they need, if they're not in in the parameters, they don't play until they are. You know that's first and foremost. If you're not in in good cardio cardiac shape, you know you're not gonna play ever for the Miami Heat. Once you get there, then you have to 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 know the carbon footprint of what it is to be to play Miami Heat basketball. Okay, that's number two. Number three is the playbook. Okay, so every time Eric's supposed to calls on a player, they come in and they, and they um they compete. Who the fuck is Gabe Vincent, guys? Who is Gabe Vincent? Can anybody give me any story on him? Okay, can anybody give me a basic story on Duncan Robinson before they started making all these um um highlight videos of him and all all this uh you know 30 for 30 stuff that he came from a D3 school and all this other stuff. Before all of that, did you know who the hell he was? You know, uh every just go down line to, to all these players that are on the Miami Heat bench. Who the fuck are these guys? You know, but when they come on the court, they bust your ass. And that's facts. They bust your ass. No matter who he calls. Okay? So you know, you know, saying the guys need minutes in order to learn the playbook. No, you know, there there is a fundamental thing that needs to happen with them within the Knicks, and Tom Thibodeau does not have it. After we played last year, you know, we we did well. This year, look at where we are. Same coach. Come on. Yeah. So um, I see some of the things that you guys are saying. You know, I you know. You know, I'm not going to put that up on the screen, but, you know, I appreciate you guys. Uh, Julian, I see you. I'm a, um, Almond Butter, I see you. Uh, you know, Peter Rodriguez, I see you. Let um, me see, uh, Adaje. Uh, Superstars already know. I already don't want to come to the Knicks. If we keep this coach, rookies will not. <laughs> if, if we keep this coach, rookies are not even going to want to, um, they're not even going to want to accept a, a workout for the Knicks, okay? You know, the, the, the agents are going to say, listen, we're not even going to accept the workout for the Knicks. Don't draft us. You know, and that's the truth. That is something in, that, that should be said, too. You know, so, so uh, shout out to Adaje. You know, uh, you, know I, you know, I always mess up guys, people's names and stuff. But you, you see the, the, um, the name there on the screen. You know, that, that's facts. You know, there's a big, a big, that's a big point right there. Oh, my God. You know, I don't know. I, I don't know about Kenny. You know, Kenny, um, uh, what's his name? Oh, man, Kenny. For, from um from the um the Knicks coaching staff, um people some guys are just built to be assistant coaches. I'm not sure if Kenny um you know what's I can't think of his name. I, I'm not sure if if Kenny Payne, excuse me. I'm not sure if he's ready for to be a head coach. You know I, I don't I don't know much about him other than him being a good big man coach. But how good is he a big man coach if Mitchell Robinson still can't make a hook shot in the lane? So I, I just don't know. Uh I don't know, man. This is crazy. Uh, <laughs> tank for Johnny Davis. Shout out to Johnny Davis, man. Johnny, there, there was a Johnny Davis in the NBA too. I, I think uh, Marvin was saying there was a a tennis player or something like that named named um Johnny Davis, if I'm not mistaken. But there also was a basketball player named Johnny Davis. Actually, was pretty good in the NBA. You know, it's just crazy, man. 
listen, I could be the coach. I could be the coach. You know, but but listen, I, I need a team. You know, I could I could be a co- I could be a Phil Jackson coach. I would sit there with my legs crossed. You know, I uh, let, let me let me get my, my let me keep my cell phone on the sideline so I can talk to my kids and my wife while I while I'm on the sideline. You know, what I'm saying let my assistant coaches do their job. You know what I'm saying? I, I'll do what I have to do at, during um, timeouts and stuff to get everybody motivated. But I don't need to to call plays. I don't need to call plays because um because a coach a, a team coached by me will already know what they're doing. You know, they will already know the options and everything they were doing. But if I call a timeout, I'm calling on the timeout to let guys to get guys back to back to um the uh, the basics. Bring it together. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my assistant coaches, I, I got Johnny Johnny Bryan on one side. I got Kenny Payne. Everybody will have a job to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm the head coach, yes. But Johnny Bryan, you got a job to do. You know what I'm saying? So if I call a timeout, if you ain't talking, then you need to get the fuck out of here too. You know, if, if Johnny Bryan is not giving his opinion on what's happening out there as, as an associate head coach, then, then he don't need to be here. If Kenny Payne is not on the, on, the, on the end of the bench talking to Jericho Sims and talking to these guys, they don't need to be there. All these other guys with, clip, with clipboards, if they're not doing their job uh, according to what I set as a fundamental footprint of what I need these guys to do, then they don't need to be here. Yes, that, that point I was trying to make earlier, Adaje, that was um, Alonzo Trey. It was um, Tim Hardaway Jr. and Alonzo Trey almost went to blows because, um, you know, Trey went to the three-point line, as he should, because this, this is the way modern basketball is played, right, that everyone keeps saying. All these young people keep saying, oh, this is modern basketball. This is not that 80s, bro. This is not that 90s, bro. Like, whatever, man. Basketball is basketball. Okay, basketball has been played the same way since 1946, you know, to, to, to tell you the truth. Um, 1946, there was no three-point line. You know, so there was no reason to to shoot threes because there was no three point line. You know, so but if you want to talk about basketball fundamentals and stuff like that, and you know, everything that that we do, fast breaks and things of that nature, um, they did that back in those days. You know, but it's the evolution of the game, yes. But right now, what's happening now is not evolution of the game. You know, it, you know, pe- people get things so misconstrued and they, they just want to be so smart and always right, and nobody else can be right. Only you, only your opinion is the right opinion. You know, and and, and if you don't agree with what I'm saying, I'm a clown. I'm this, that, and the other. You know what I'm saying? You know, stick it up, stick it up there. You know. Uh, ay, ay, ay. Yeah, I, I, you know, thank you guys, man. Thank you guys. You know, what's up, um, Mr. Cully? Ah, uh, man. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm sorry, Cully, man. I, I'm just, just peeping you guys, but I, just, I just want to keep this under, uh, under an hour, just to get my, my bars off, and then I'm out of here. Listen, man. We need to do something together. I maybe mean, you called in one time, you know that that was great, but I was still trying to get the, the phone lines are real fucked up at the time, you know. But I got I got it more in 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 tune now. But listen, Mister Cully, we we got to do something together, man. You know, so you know, let's see if we if we can um if maybe I can stay up late to jump on something that you're doing just to hang out with you guys for a little while, or maybe you can come on the show just me and you and we we can just kick it. Let's do it, man. So you know, I'm telling in front of everybody, man. So you know, we got to see Cully on on the channel, and I gotta I gotta see if I can um catch you guys on a late night. So um anyway man I appreciate you guys man Uh Hey I am a dad <laughs> I am a dad that's the thing like it's the there's a disconnect All right look, I, I'm I'm going to try to try to keep it short with all all of my 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 evruisms or for the diehardisms or whatever you want to say but but listen there's a disconnect between young and old okay Young people are there. They're like, oh, you old. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. This and the other. Fuck you. Why don't you go back to where you came from? This and the other. You know, if you want to come into the into the um, doghouse or the or the, or the terror dome, and the, as they say, you know, you want to be in the terror dome. This and the other. You know, like like um somebody tried to tell me or whatever. But listen, um, my thing is, why are you yelling and screaming? What, what do I say? What's what's my what's my favorite catchphrase? And I'm never gonna say it again because my pops my pops told me to chill out. You know what I'm saying? So. I'm not gonna say it ever again, but but you guys heard it. Everybody knows what my favorite catchphrase is. Because my thing is, what why are you yelling and screaming, calling me a clown and the other? Hey, guess what? Let's 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 um cue my favorite catchphrase. Now what? Oh, bro, why you gotta say it like that? Yo, man, he's mad. That's mad disrespectful. I don't know how you can say that. Listen, I know what I'm saying. I know what I know what I'm saying. You know, you know. Do you hear what I'm saying? You know. So if you hear what I'm saying, then what you gonna do about what I what I just said? You know, you know what I'm saying? So th- that's the energy that I have. Yelling and screaming about, about R.J. Barrett is one thing, but you heard what I said. You know, so, it, it, you know, it is what it is. But like I said, I'm trying to, I'm trying to avoid that. I'm trying to avoid that because that's not why I'm here. I'm here for a positive reason. Like I said, I'm trying to do a podcast with Collier. You know, I'm, I'm trying to connect with other, other people throughout the internet, uh, real people, not just, um, I'm not looking, like, have you ever seen me on, on, on here doing a podcast with somebody talking about, hey guys, uh, I have a great podcast today. Guess what? I, I have, um, you know, uh, Mark Berman is going to be here today. We're going to talk about the Knicks. Ever? Have you ever heard me say that? 
you know, I've had conversations with with, with um, plenty of different people offline. I don't, I don't never say, hey, uh, hey, uh, would you like to come in my, my podcast so we can uh, so we can talk about Knicks and stuff? Hey, guys, <laughs> we have a great podcast today. You wouldn't believe who I have here. Uh, oh my God, I'm gonna come. <laughs> Woo! Uh, I, I have this 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 great um guy that wrote a book about the Knicks that that uh, about the '90s. Uh, but he's younger than me. You know, but he but he has a great book and he's gonna tell you all about it and and I'm gonna listen to everything he has to say because he's so smart, you know. Or I'm gonna have another guy on the show because I I need to get knowledge from that guy, you know. Or I need to praise that guy and get out of here. You never you'd never see me, you know, have a guy like that on here. If you have seen anybody on this podcast, it's because I wanted them here so I can because I I, I appreciate them, you know. They are stars in their own right. You know, people that I mentioned, I got Cully on the screen for a reason. There's people out here that I respect wholeheartedly, my brother, my brothers and sisters here. You know, people that I respect wholeheartedly. Shout out to Erin. Shout out to Erin uh, from, from Twitter. I think she's using Forever Nicks now. You know, she had to block her um her comments and, and her her um retweets because people are bugged out, man. You know, you know what I'm saying? People are crazy. You know, but I got Erin on here. If you, if you find that podcast with me and Erin, Erin is a gem. You know, Jim, she could start her own podcast today about anything and she would be fantastic. You know, I, I only I only talk to, to real people. You know, shout out to um, you know, I, I, I'm so bad with with, uh, with names, you know, you know what I'm saying? Uh but I got I got so many people that that I can mention that I've had on the pod that they're just great, great people. And then it's just me and him, me and them, him, her, whatever, talking basketball, fam. You know, I don't give a fuck about um your knowledge. You ain't teaching me shit, bro. We're gonna kick it, we're gonna kick it and have a great time. That's my thing, man. That's my thing. I'm I'm only here for that. You know, you you guys that follow me, all my all my regulars and all the people that might might, might have popped in on the podcast now and just discovering me. Listen, the reason why I'm here because 2018, I almost died in the hospital twice because of of pneumonia. You know what I'm saying? So listen, when 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 people go through shit like that, it, it puts their life in perspective. Okay, listen, what the fuck am I doing with my life? You know that that got me to this point where I almost died twice in the hospital for pneumonia. You know, now I have asthma as an adult. What the fuck got me to this point in, in my life? What am I doing? You know, what do I want to do with my life? You, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the first thing that I did once I got better, uh, the first thing that I, that I did is that I went to California. That's immediately, that's the first thing I did is went to California. You know, because, well, anyway, I, I was I was uh, training for the LA Marathon, which is bugged out. How the fuck do you get the pneumonia uh, and while you're training for the, the LA Marathon? So I, I think I, I, was, uh, I was under a lot of stress at the time. So anyway, but anyway, the doctors are like, yo, I don't know how you got pneumonia if you're in, in tip-top shape. I was in great shape at the time. I was running at, at the time. I was still getting to the 24 um, mile, but I could run a half marathon at the drop of a dime at that point. And how the hell do you get pneumonia at that point? It's called stress, fam. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, I, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm being transparent and telling you what I have to say, you know, just, just for, for a point. You know what I'm saying? You, 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 you must take advantage of this life, man. You must take advantage of all opportunities in front of you. If you want to do something, do it. If you want to do something, do it. Do you know how many people at, at work or just like friends of mine say, oh, nah, man, that chick's out of my league. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? If we could be transparent, if everybody could be transparent, if you could just like, like the internet, if you could just click a girl, like double click a girl, click, click, and then all her her um, her um life pops up and all her, the men that she ever been with, I I'm quite sure that you are probably the best man that she ever been with. You know, but, but the reason why she's never been with a guy like you because you never stepped up to talk to her, you fuck. What's the matter with you? Same thing with women. Women, women want to put themselves on a pedestal and they want to do this other, other other stuff because of whatever warped fantasy they have in their mind. But listen, you know, if, if you are a queen, if you are a queen and you keep calling yourself a queen, whatever it is you need to say to get through this life, then then, then you need to act accordingly. You're a queen. So carry yourself as a queen. Carry yourself as a queen, walk as a queen, you will find your king. You know, and you will not be finding your king. Your king will will, will, will find you. Easy money right there. Easy. You know what I'm saying? The, you know, I'm just saying the point I'm trying to make make here is that listen, man, fuck the bullshit. Fuck the bullshit. Yeah, man. Peace to everybody. Everybody salute me on the chat, whatever, you know. So I appreciate you guys, man. Uh yeah, I'm I'm just, I'm telling you, I'm going, I'm going, I'm just, I'm just being myself, man. You know, like I said, I haven't having conversations with with um Nick podcasters offline and stuff, just trying to kick it, and uh, and uh, having a good time and stuff. Uh, you know, people people are surprised uh of, of how uh, how I am. I'm like this all the time. If anything, I'm more chill. But you know, if if you know, just like anything, I, I snap as you see, and and I, I just kind of go off the deep end sometimes. But it's all good. I, I show as 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 quick as I as I pop off. I show love. I show love too, man. 
You know, I show love to everybody. Because I mean, listen, like, 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 like the point I'm trying to say, I, I died almost died twice in the hospital, legit. You know, almost died twice in the hospital. So, so I'm not gonna spend the rest of my life like trying to make enemies out here. You know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to connect with with people, like-minded people that I, that um that love what I love and have good spirits. Because I can see, I can see the spirit, real recognizes real. I can see the spirit in certain people. You know, what I'm saying so. Listen, I know if if I see you, you see me. You know, so let, let's just keep it moving. Uh, I'm trying to get down to the end of these um end of these uh, comments here. Uh, let me make sure I don't miss anything here. <laughs> you guys are funny. Um, ADC, ADC doesn't even live in this country, bro. ADC lives in Costa Rica, fam. These are Nick fans. ADC is one of the one of the best guys out there, you know. But but you guys keep going to certain podcasts. I don't know why. You know, uh, Eddie ADC ADC the zombie. People that know who he is and and seen him on NBK or seen him on other shows, you know what he's all about. You know, and like I said, my man is in Costa Rica. English is not his first language. He speaks Spanish most of the day, but then he comes on on, on whatever podcast you see, um, from another country. You know, beautiful internet, everything works better than mine's, and, and he still can spit that Nick shit. That's the one thing is universal, the orange and blue. You know, shout out to the Nick's um Nick's Brazil, you know, Nick's Brazil podcast. Shout out to those guys. I don't know what my man Victor is saying on there. You know, he has a translator. But when you speak that orange and blue, I know exactly what, what he's saying. I know exactly what he knows exactly what I'm saying. If he's speaking that orange and blue, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get down to the end here. Hey, Mr. Marvin, I, I can't open the phone phone nice today, man. You know, it's um it's kind of like late to the end here, but you know, I, I will do that a little bit later. I just want to make my point for those that, that are popping in now and want to know what this is about. Um, check out the beginning of the podcast. I broke down three videos um, pertaining to um, Tom Thibodeau's offense and stuff like that. I will do this more often, you know, so um, so please go back and, and check it out. Check out the full pod and get the whole full um, context of what's going on here. And um, hit me in the comments because I'll be in the comments. I respond to every single comment. You know, you know, if, if you comment too much, you know, I'm not going to respond to all your comments because people are crazy. They're, they're commenting as they're watching, which is dope. I get it. You know, but I, I will com- I will respond to your comments. So hit me in the comments after the show and we can continue the conversation. Uh, yeah. Sh- um, shout out to Knicks Nation. Which is Knicks Nation 112. Shout out to you. Um, I just want to make sure I get everybody that's coming in here. Uh, King Ribby. We got, uh, what's good, my man? We got uh, Naruto Goku. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I always seem stressed. Hey, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm married. That's number one. That's the number one stress. Number number two, I got I got um two two boys that are the same height, same energy, and they're destroying this house right now. You know what I'm saying? I had to I had to, you know, um, you know, do my daddy duties just now just to make them stop because they were really going crazy. So I had to do that over there, you know, which I don't like to do, but you know, I had to like, you know, you know, make them stop. Go to bed, fam. You know, stop. You know, you shouldn't be standing in the windowsill, <laughs> like you, like you a gargoyle. You shouldn't be standing in the windowsill. Okay, when when you're supposed to be sleeping, you know it's crazy. It's kids, kids are bugged out, man. Yeah, man. I appreciate you, um, Ribby. Uh, tough love is always here. Like I said, let me see if anybody else that I see this new here. Uh, this is somebody that I, that I haven't seen in a while. This is my guy here too. So you know, I'm looking at half a face here. So I'm 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 quite sure that um that that um this is. Do you do you know Angel? You know, just just let me know if you if you know Angel, if you if you know Angel and that's how we met each other, just let me know, okay? In in the comments that that way I can know that's you, okay, Mister Miss Jessel Cash. But anyway, yeah, um, Pudge, what's good? Uh, what's good, um, Jarrell from Experience. Yeah, I pre- I appreciate you, man. Your your I am Jarrell is dope too. He has a podcast. You know, I keep telling him to post his podcast. Anybody that got podcasts and you fuck with me, post it in the comments. I'm not gonna delete it. You know, to, I want people to know you. I want people to know what you're doing. You know, if you have a good show, I want people to see it. You know, the people, will, will, um, the real ones will, will, will come and, and check it out. Uh, Next Worldwide, you're in the Bahamas. Okay, cool, man. I got you. But you look very familiar to me, man. I feel like, I feel like, um, like I've seen you before. Uh, Okay, I got you. It's from the podcast. Okay, cool, man. Anyway, so let, let's wrap this up, man. Shout out to, um, to... To Marvin, Marvin, the greatest on um, call in ever. Cully's also um, the second um, greatest on um, caller that I ever had. You know, shout out to everybody that ever called, you know, to the podcast. But we will, we will do a, another call in show pretty soon. Um, you know, what, what day is today? Today's Monday. Well, I'm off tomorrow, man. So um, the Knicks don't play until Wednesday. So maybe we'll do a call in show tomorrow. So so tune in for that. I'll probably do that sometime. State most likely will, will be with me. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll wrap this up and I'll see you guys next time, man. So shout out to everybody that's um, popping off here in this comments. 
<laughs> Iru, Iru was the, the high floor, low ceiling shit. Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> you guys, man, you, anyway, you're a crazy dude, man. Yeah, I'm wrapping up. So, peace, guys. Four fingers to the forehead, tucking the thumb, salute. Um, listen, let, let's let's do this, right? Uh, I, 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 since everybody's here, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a giveaway because I've been so I've been feeling like like the um the feeling to to give away. So I'm gonna give just ten dollars. I'll give ten dollars to somebody that that can tell me where I got that phrase from. Four fingers to the forehead, tucking the thumb salute. Tell me where I got it from. I'm not gonna give you a hint. So for for those that really watch the podcast and know where that comes from, uh, hit me in the comments on YouTube on this video, and I'll, I'll cash up you, up you ten dollars. All right. So for those that are in the comments, there's quite a few people in here right now. So don't leave. Like I said, for those that are paying attention, uh, four fingers to the forehead, tucking the thumb salute. Tell me where I got that from, and then I'll, I'll cash out you at you ten dollars. Don't say it now. Say it in the in the in the comment of the video once I end it. All right. So Evil is out. Four fingers to the forehead, tucking the thumb, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.